Feelings here at the U.S. Cellular Center. Very high. I don't even know if he could purposely hit that ceiling. I've seen some pretty powerful spikes though today. <laughs> yeah. Let's watch the replay on this. The recoiling, the approach, bang. Over the, the net for the kill. The Tripola fans are, are singing, she's a freshman. She They're trying to rub a it in freshman. a little bit. 5-3 now, AGWSR, with the 10th kill coming off Macy Eubin. Not too bad to have 10 kills here in the early going <laughs> of the second game. Nope, it's pretty good. Doing the math, she's probably about on pace for 27. <laughs> Ball last touched by the Cougars. It'll be another point for the Panthers. Now, these two schools located geographically pretty close to each other. Tripola, Northeast Iowa, AGWSR, Northern Iowa, maybe closer to North Central Iowa as they play in the NICL. Well, and they did play each other once during the season, and AGWSR won that match. But as we've seen already, it doesn't, doesn't matter, matter what happens in the regular season. It probably helps AGWSR with their confidence coming into their first state final. 6-4. There's the attack. That's a big swing. Give credit to the Cougars to keep it alive and to keep focused, not get flustered, and they return it for a point. Timeout on the court. As Tripola trailing by three. It's pretty early to call a timeout, but you feel like it, it might be a needed time? Well, I think... I mean, I might wait a little longer depending on the momentum. And right now it doesn't feel like the momentum to me is with a GWSR. But sometimes you take a timeout because you notice something. And so maybe maybe Will Bauman has said, you know, hey, they're playing this defense. We originally thought it was rotation, but now they're in player back. The corners are open or vice versa. I mean, it, sometimes coaches see something that they want to communicate to their players also. Well, Barb, a quick explanation. You talked about the offenses. You could have a 6-1 six, six or 6-2 or a 5-1. So you're telling me there's different defenses as well. There are different defenses. And the main, uh, there, there, I would say there are main, three main ones. Um, but most people probably play two. But there, I did see the third one at the state tournament also. There's a player back defense. And mainly that defense is also called perimeter. And it's what it says it is. The defensive players in the back row stay on the perimeter of the court and defend the perimeter of the court. The weak spots there are the middle of the court and the corners. So if, if you know your opponent's playing perimeter defense, you shoot the ball to the corners or just put it in the middle the of the court. Corners. To the golden corners. For rotation defense, you rotate so that your defensive players are more in the corners. So there, middle back is open. And then the third defense is player up rotation and, or I mean, sorry, player up defense. And the one of the players comes up and plays directly behind the block. And it leaves basically two players to defend the backcourt. Makes sense. As everyone, every team has their own different type of defense and they can mix it up a little bit there. That time the defense was there. The double block was there, but it blocked back, rejected it out of bounds, and that's why Tripola fans with their stocking caps and body paint are, are cheering because it's now just a two-point deficit, and Tripola has the ball with Marissa Shinstein serving 95% for the tournament. But there's the announcer's jinx with the service there. Trying to take it kind of cross-court. She was standing in the middle of that baseline trying to play that far sideline. Well, she was probably told to serve, serve zone one. Um, generally, players get signals from their coaches on where the coaches want them to serve, and zone one is the right back corner, and she probably just hit it a little bit wide. Net shaken on Tripola's side, so the Cougars will be the first to hit double digits here in game two. They lead it 10-6, and it's the second kill of the evening for Cassidy Rigana, who's had a Great performance just serving the ball with three service aces to date. Free ball over the net. Big swing. They call it out of bounds. That was hard to see from here because yeah. we're on the other side of the line, so it looked like it could have been in, but the line judge is right down that line, and he knows what he's doing. 
And I, I really don't think there is a better seat in the house than where we are right here, right kind of perched above the far corner of the court. But the officials have even a better that's advantage. That's right, that's right. They're right on those lines. 11th kill for AGWSR's Macy Eubin. And here's Kelsey Enslin, the setter, with a strong serve. best pass so let's see AGWSR they still get a point out of it well and that you can kind of tell that the players kind of read that because as soon as the as soon as the AGWSR's players hands went up you know she's gonna set it she can't hit it over so that's when they should you know kind of creep in but they've also been shooting it to the corners so if you creep in then it goes to the corners it's and you're sunk open. so yeah it's trickery all around Big time block by the Cougars. Cassidy Rigana in there. She just seems to be all over the place. Let's watch this play unfold. Just slaps it right back, trying to get underneath it. The libero unable to, and it's a largest lead of the match at 13-7, a 4-0 run, but then followed by a service to air. Runs an important, important part of the sport of volleyball That's as we've right. seen many runs here throughout the afternoon and early evening and as a coach you try and minimize the opponent opponent's runs and maximize yours you know you want to push a little extra hard for your own and you want to push a little extra hard so everything's an, an extra hard push to stop the opponent from scoring several points in a row almost easier said than done though barb oh it's definitely easier said than done just about everything in volleyball is easier <laughs> said than done the attack down the line, joust at the net. Tripola wins that battle, but AGWSR able to return it. Tipped out of bounds, last touched by the Cougars, and Tripola's in business. They hit the double digits now, trailing just by three. Class 1A championship match. The Cougars from AGWSR leading the series one game to none as Morgan Peters puts the ball into play. Western Christian defeated Dyke New Hartford three games to none. Marion took care of Mount Vernon in a thrilling five-game thriller, and Ankeny swept Johnston three games to none. Barb Randall and Eric Braley, we've enjoyed every single second of it as we have seen some great volleyball at all class sizes. And that begs the question, you know, what's the difference between a 4A and a 1A? Is it just depth? Is it athletic ability as well? Well, I think that has some to do with it, but I also think in this day and age, with as many opportunities as there are to play year-round, I, I think the difference between the class sizes is a lot smaller than it used to be oh, a few years ago. Back when you were playing. <laughs> yeah, just a few years ago. <laughs> Ball came into your living room set there as it was some on the instant replay. Camera operators have to be on their toes. That's right. 16-10. Nobody's off the hook. The fourth service ace we've seen by Cassidy Riganow, but also her second service air. So that's a trade, one ace, one air. Five point lead for the Cougars. Barrow receives it. Now the give and go and the standing down ball attack. At that point, you just want to kind of get it over because you are hitting it so far back on your side of the court. Well, and if you're not in good position, you need to make smart choices. And you can make really aggressive choices and you can make smart choices. And I think it's good to have a good mix. Um, when you're in good position, you want to be aggressive. But when you're out of position, just make sure you get the ball in somewhere so you get another shot at it. Jumping for joy is Megan Gilbert, the freshman. Middle blocker with the kill. That is her fourth of the evening. It's a 16-13 lead for the Cougars. But on a run is Tripola here. So a timeout called on the court. What's AGWSR probably talking about right now? Yes, it's good we have the lead. Well, and I think, you know, they're getting a lot of touches on defense. They're doing a lot of things right. They just need to stay with the game plan that they've been using because it's, it's effective. And I haven't seen too many balls fall to the ground, except for that, you know, last hammer by Gilbert, without a, a hand from the Cougars on it, or maybe I should say a paw um, <laughs> on it. And, and that's tough to do. 
I feel like more students are wearing sunglasses than not wearing sunglasses in the <laughs> stands here this evening. A new trend for 2008. Watching some high flying volleyball in the Class 1A championship. Nice attack. Kept alive. Great hustle. Free ball over the net. They have the advantage though. Back corner just grabbed it in bounds. Just grabbed it in. So AGWSR, even though there was awesome hustle. Well, and that was a smart play by Eubin. Uh, the left back player, who was Kirchhoff, went running off the court, and Eubin put it right back at her, and she did, hadn't had time to get her feet stopped. So that's, that's one of those things you need to be paying attention to. 17-13, Cougars over the Panthers here. In game two, it was a 25-21 victory for AGWSR in game one. The Panthers, though, playing probably their best volleyball of the night right now. There's the signal from head coach Will Bowman. Kind of an off-balance attack. It still works. Out of bounds. Point AGWSR. Well, what's neat, I, we haven't, we've talked about other family relationships and other relationships. We haven't really talked about the relationship on the on Tripola's team. Number 10 is, um, oh, I'm sorry, it's not number 10. Number 14 is Chelsea Gilbert, and number six is Megan Gilbert, and they're sisters. Megan's a freshman, and Chelsea's, sorry, I'm using the wrong name again. Yeah, Chelsea is a sophomore. And looking what those two players have meant to this program this year, head coach Bowen said, any coach in the country would love to have Gilbert the next four years as just a freshman. I have to think that the older sis might be helping influence her a little bit Absolutely. too. Absolutely. You can't, you know, we've talked about it all day long about how it takes a team, but you can't do anything in this sport by yourself. You can't pepper by yourself. I mean, basically, actually, surf. We did that, talk that about serving. That is the one lone thing That's that right. you can do by yourself. But other than that, you have to have someone else do it with you. It doesn't, it's not as effective passing against a wall. You can do it, but you don't get the same, the same, you know, rebounding and, and that kind of thing. So it takes more than one person to do it, what they're doing. Volleyball, one of the main true team sports. I know there's many different team sports, but all elements have to come together and you have to have balance. Not everyone is going to have the best match night in and night right. out. Someone else is gonna have to pick up the slack. And uh, I think maybe that might be some of the differences between some of the teams that are taking home championship trophies and some that are not. The teams that have the depth and the, the girls that can step up and, and pick up the slack where where needed to, those, those are the players that are winning the championships. Well, and there are definitely sports where one player, you can get that one player the ball or whatever tool you use to make your scores, and that player can do a lot with it. But in volleyball, you don't have that much control over it. You can't get that the ball to that one player all the time. Everybody has to touch it at one point or another. Service air coming out of a timeout. So the Cougars get a side out and now it'll be the Panthers with a chance to serve back for Tripola it's Megan Gilbert 99% during the tournament serving the volleyball set to Kirchhoff down for the kill now just trailing by four points here in game two well and like we've talked about Eric you do not have to hammer the ball to get a point she places the ball perfectly in that golden corner, and it's another point closer to tying the game. Five foot, eight inches tall, Kaylee Kirchhoff. So far tonight, Kirchhoff with seven kills to lead Tripola. There's another one. That time she kind of changed up what she was going to do and the, I think it kind of surprised the defense a little bit. Eight kills to her name, by far leading the charge for Tripola. AGWSR has been led by Macy Eubin who has 13. There's a kill in the middle. 
Jessica McDowell. McDowell, a six-foot senior middle hitter. And you know the ball control is on when the setter can set quick like that to the middle. The Cougars just need four more points to take game two. Tripola trails just by four. That one's in, though. Just hugging that far sideline on the cross-court attack. And it is kill number 14 for Eubin, who goes back to serve. Flat-footed. Flat-footed, but you, you're reaching for those boundary lines. And if you can get it in that foot, you're golden. <laughs> a golden foot. It works to perfection. And now a point by Tripola. Exact same feeling from the first game. The Cougars jump out to a four-point lead, and then it's dead even from the rest from then on to, to the very end, and end up winning by four points in the first. Right now, in the second game, the Cougars jump out to a four-point lead. It's been dead even ever since, but the Panthers can't go on a 4-0 run of their own, it seems like. Well, and that's where the Cougars are doing a great job of controlling the runs for the Panthers. They're not letting them have point after point after point. And no longer are the Panthers letting the Cougars, but the Panthers have to get that run in order to tie it and move ahead. Third kill of the evening for Elizabeth Lady. And to serve it up, it'll be the kill queen herself from Tripola, Kaylee Kirchhoff. The team's trailing though by four, and that takes Kirchhoff out of that front row. So now playing in the back. Set close to the net, a great block by Tripola. Wiedemeyer. Twenty-three, twenty here in Game Two, Class One A State Championship Final. Nice roll shot there, taking advantage over the block, and it's Cassidy Riganov. I like how she plays. She plays tough. She, you know, puts puts the ball where it needs to be. And that was that was kind of the, the defense we were talking about earlier, where the middle of the court is is open. And once you find that hole, you exploit it. She's found it with serving the ball with four aces. That one's hit out of bounds, and it's another kill for Cassidy Rigana, and it is another win for AGWSR. They win. Game two, 25-20. They are just one game away from being your Class 1A state championship team. Tropola, they have other ideas, though. They'll be back for game three right after this. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back in just a minute, right here on the Iowa High School Sports Network. Coca-Cola is proud to sponsor Iowa High School Athletics and the Iowa High School Sports Network. Coca-Cola, building relationships with our customers and our consumers in the communities we serve. Casey's General Store is proud to sponsor Iowa High School Athletics and the Iowa High School Sports Network. Casey's store location information is located at caseys.com. Russell Athletic is a proud sponsor of Iowa High School Athletics and the Iowa High School Sports Network. Russell Athletic, providing athletic apparel for a wide variety of sports and fitness activities for over a century. The Iowa Bankers Association is proud to sponsor Iowa High School Athletics. Iowa Banks, serving Iowans with financial services for business, home, and retirement. Your future, our focus, Iowa Banks. The wave going on here at the U.S. Cellular Center all the way around the ring. As AGWSR putting on a show for the fans. 25-21 the final in game one, 25-20 in game two. Tripola has some work to do, but no doubt they can turn the boat around, turn the ship around. There's some difference in the statistics here, even though the Cougars only win by five. That's right, and even though AGWSR has four service errors to one for Tripola, the main difference is at the kill, where the Cougars have six more kills than Tripola and a couple more service aces. Other than that, we're looking at pretty much an even game. 
the wave continues to go as we have a short intermission between the second and third games. Gotta love it. It's the state championship here at the U.S. Cellular Center in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. I mean, it's been going on for minutes. Usually <laughs> you go around a couple times. Yeah, that was fun. And they're keeping themselves entertained here. That's for sure. Barb well, Randall and Eric Braley with the call for the Iowa High School Sports Network here on Iowa Public Television. Broadcasting live since noon. And I feel fresh as a spring chicken. <laughs> and you smell fresh as a spring <laughs> chicken, too. Just kidding. Thank you, Barb. <laughs> <laughs> At least we fun. haven't been sweating all day like some of the exactly. people around. And this is, uh, that kind of brings up an interesting point. You have the tournament starts on Wednesday. You play one match on Wednesday, one on Thursday, one on Friday, and the final on Saturday. Kind of. The first round, the quarterfinals, right. are Wednesday and Thursday. So if you play Wednesday, you don't play Thursday. If you play Thursday, you don't play Wednesday, because that's how we can get all the matches in. When you take a look, though, at the tournaments, a lot of times early on in the season, pre-conference, you're talking playing two or three matches in one day. Or five. I think the limit, the state doesn't allow you to play more than six matches in one day. And those aren't best of five? Nope, they're usually best of three. Sometimes um, pool play will be uh, two games and whoever wins, it's not a best of, so you could be one and one. And then whoever wins the pool will go on to play the best two out of three. This makes me sore and tired thinking about it. <laughs> all that, yeah, there's uh, a lot involved in it. All that taking place in one day. Well, Barb Randall joining us on the broadcast, played her co collegiate ball at the University of Iowa. She's a member of the Iowa High School Girls Athletic Association Hall of Fame. Played on the USA National Team and coached at Purdue in the University of Northern Iowa, providing her expertise all night long, all afternoon long as well. And the Cougars and Panthers even at one apiece here as the third game getting underway. Now, Tripola knows that they need to win this third game, looking to force that fourth. And AGWSR with the hitting error there by Eubin. Well, and Eubin's trying a couple things. She, her last hit before that didn't make it. She tried the line. She's close, but not quite getting it. So, um, you know, the last couple games, she started with the first couple kills of the match, of the game. So. A little bit different for Chipola already. Great hang time by Megan Gilbert. The ball just hung in the air and she hung right along with it. That's full right. extension. <laughs> and went up and was able to collect the kill. 3-1 lead for the Panthers. Battle at the net. Well, and that was a little bit of a trick play. The setter meant to set a back a quick back set to her own player and it the ball drifted over the net and the blocker wasn't quite and ready it for it and it worked not exactly how you diagram draw it up on the chalkboard but it works let's see what AGWSR can do serving the ball well a quick return there as they went cross court attack and throwing it down again that's Megan Gilbert the freshman phenom who has six kills for number six well, she might need to change her number yeah. and wear a bigger number. 22. Yeah. <laughs> I have a feeling that will not be her last kill of the evening. 4-2 advantage. Make it 5-2. I don't know. So a sense of urgency or something for Tripola out there. They, they look like a different team than what we saw in the first and second game. They do, and that was a beautiful slide by, by Megan. And the block wasn't quite formed, and she could tell that, and she hit back cross court where she didn't have a blocker and that's as a hitter whether you're young or if you have experience that's exactly what you need to do macy eubin her 16th kill wow for agwsr in the third game just getting started i think i kind of jokingly mentioned she was on pace for 27 <laughs> and she might get there especially if this goes four or five that's right I think she'd rather not get the 27 kills <laughs> and just have it go three and have her team win the state yeah, championship. Yeah, probably. Just a guess. The Cougars set it to the middle, and it's an easy block there. Well, in that time, 
it was a little bit hard for McDowell to see the block because she was trying to swing from the ball. She was underneath the ball. And when you when you hit the ball, you want to be behind the ball so you can not only see the ball, but peripherally then you can see the block also. And that time it was just, she was, just got behind it. And so you have to look up and you can't really see anything out in front of you at that point. Get the side out though. Cougars trail by three, even though they lead the series two games to none. Playing for the 1A state championship title here this evening. A push over the net. Free ball close to the net. Someone's in the net or underneath it, and it's going to be someone on AGWSR's team. Well, and I think they called that on number one, Kelsey Enslin. Um, she was the only one up at the net, and they called that she was over the line. Now, you can touch that white line, that center line with your foot or your knee or whatever body part, but you cannot go over it. The minute you go over it, it's it's a violation. Big time hammer there by McDowell. Making it 8-5. Tripola's still on top. That is the fifth kill for her. And back to serve will be Jessica McDowell, a six foot senior middle hitter. Multi-sport athlete with a service ace, her first of the evening. That was a tough serve to drop just in front of the passer. Just how you want your your top spin serves to fall. Now you bring up a good point is McDowell with another top spin serve. How many different types of serves are there? Oh, there are probably a bazillion, but I don't know all <laughs> of them. I know the main the main couple. There, spin serve and then a floater serve. And the spin serve, you can put any kind of spin on it that you want. You can have side spin or top spin or whatever. But a spin serve, even though it can come at you a lot harder, it's a lot easier to pass. All you have to do to pass that ball is get behind the spin. So if it's a top spin, you just have to get under it. If it's a side spin, you just have to get behind the spin, the, the way the ball's moving. For a floater, a floater is a lot harder to pass because you hit through the middle of the ball, and that makes the ball move, kind of like a knuckleball in baseball. Mm -hmm. And the ball moves and kind of takes a different path. So you think the ball's going to be in one place, and then it'll lift on you at the last minute, or it'll dive on you at the last minute. So floater serves are harder to pass, but they don't come at you as fast. Spin serves come out at you faster, but they're easier to pass. And as we talk about, serving is such a critical element to the game of volleyball, and it's something you can do by yourself I mean, it'd, it'd be nice if you had a whole rack of volleyballs yeah. to serve, so you so don't you have don't to have run to chase around them. And chase it every single time. And I think that might be one of the advantages we've seen for the Cougars so far tonight. Maybe better serving team than Tripola. Maybe that's why they have a two games to none lead in the series. Well, they definitely look like they're serving more aggressively. And I don't know if that's their game plan. I know, um, I'm sure you've probably heard of Misty May and Carrie Walsh. Their game plan is not tough serving. Their game plan is tough defense, so they don't they don't go for aces. They aren't trying to get Lollipop aces. Lollipop it over. They, they're just trying to get the ball in, and then they know that the rest of their game is going to stand behind them. So it's just different different strategies and tactics by different coaches. Tooled out of bounds. Point for Eubin and the Cougars. Eubin has now 18 kills, and we are tied on the scoreboard at 10 to 10. One of the best servers for AGWSR back behind the service line, blocked at the net, kept alive. And that's an easy slam dunk there. That was number nine, Elizabeth Platty. Platty on the evening with four kills, and that's pretty balanced on the side of Tripola. Nine kills, seven kills, and then several players with four kills. And ideally, that's what you want to do. I know we've talked about um, dispersing the sets, but ideally you want to have a team where you have so many offensive weapons that you can use any of them at any time. And as a setter, that way you confuse the defense and they don't know where the ball's going. We have seen most of the teams have pretty good disbursement, but there are a few that you know are... are More heavy toward one yeah, they, or two they particular Yeah, they weigh heavily ways. towards one or two hitters. And those are harder, those are easier to defend, but sometimes those hitters are really hard to stop. Big block at the net, a solo block for the Cougars, Megan Peters. And that's a lot of times scouting report, well, we need to stop one player. Great. 
line up and try and actually right. stop it. Right. Easier said than done. That's exactly right. It is easier said than done. The nice thing with um, the Ackley Geneva Wellsburg Steamboat Rock Team is that they have basically, you know, they have you been getting most of the kills, but the rest of the team supports her so well with defense. And, you know, they've gotten good blocks and they've they gained.